Hey guys, this is Wheelchair Guy, Bold Dominion Tech. Today we're going to build a retro pie. You might be asking yourself, what is a retro pie? Well, a retro pie is basically an emulator that's going to allow us to make an NES, a mini NES, and it's full HDMI. Why not do this? Why pay $60 when you can pay $30 for the Raspberry Pi and literally do this project for super cheap? Uh, what this video is, is going to include, it's going to include the items that you need, everything you need. It's going to include the imaging of the device, as well as um, initial setup when we plug it up for the first time, and gameplay. So anyways guys, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So you need a Raspberry Pi. I'll put a link in the description. Um, this is Raspberry Pi 3. What I like about it is it got four USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI is a standard on all Pis. There's the micro USB, that's a standard. And then this is the slot where you actually put that little micro SD guy. So there's that. Um, I also suggest a case. You can find cases uh, that look like an NES on Etsy actually. Or you, if you have a 3D printer you can make one. Um, so there's also this. Which this is a micro SD card. Um, I suggest a minimum of four gig. I have a 64, which is overkill in this case. Um, you also need this adapter um, to plug the micro SD in, because then you're going to use this guy, which this guy is your standard USB um, memory card reader. So you plug this up to the computer to be able to burn the image of RetroPie. Um, here we have the controller. Um, I got this on Amazon for like 10 bucks. It's just a standard USB um, controller. Looks exactly like the NES controller. I would also suggest a keyboard like I have in front of me. The reason for that is that um, there are button, button functions that you're not going to be able to get um, without a keyboard or another type of controller. The Xbox controller also works very well, the Xbox 360. Um, this is a USB drive. This is going to be so you can dump your ROMs onto the emulator. Um, and that just about covers everything. Also, for the USB power, you can just use a standard brick like this with the micro USB cord and you'll be fine. So anyways, those are the items needed, so let's go ahead and let's do the imaging. Alright guys, so this is, uh, I'm doing this from a Mac, but it doesn't matter if you do Mac or PC, it works on both. Um, so anyways, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to retropie.org.uk, you'll come here, um, and then you'll go to... Uh, Go to download, and the version of of Pi that you want to download because you're going to use either the Raspberry Pi two or three for this project. You wouldn't want to use zero or one. You could use them, but let's just not do that. So, anyways, you click on this, and then that would go ahead and download. This is going to download an image. Um, you might not be able. You might have to unzip this. So, in order to do that, you'd have to go to Seven Zip, which you can go there, and then you can download for your corresponding version. And then um, this would this simply is just to unzip files that are zipped. You might not even need it in this case. The other thing is um, now this would this is where it makes a difference if you're on Windows or Mac. But I'm doing this video for Windows, so anyways, Win32 Disk Imager is the next thing that you would want to need. You you're going to need. So anyways, you pretty much this is what you get once you install this. Um, you have the device here. Um, that's the that's the USB device that has your uh, memory card, the SD card reader. You plug it up, and then you'll see what the device name is. It'll probably be like H, F, G, something like that. And you'll select the device there. Then you'll select the folder here, and you'll select the actual image. So what you would do is you would find the image. Like uh, you go to downloads, and you'd find you probably would find it somewhere close to the top you know it'd be like um, like here so in this case this file does have to be unzipped but say it didn't it's just an image you would simply drag this into here 
or you'd select it from the folder and then you would simply write you'd simply click write and then it would burn the image to the Raspberry Pi um, and that's that's uh, that's pretty much all you would have to do in order to get the image on there alright guys so to set up a RetroPie the USB drive to transfer the files over because the files will transfer directly from the USB and once they're transferred they go straight to the SD card so that's kinda of the nice thing you don't have to keep your USB clogged up with all this anyways so once you do that you create the file name of RetroPie you plug it up to the, your RetroPie you have the Pi on and then it'll make the USB like go crazy with all these lights and that's the process of creating the folders that you're going to see here so anyways there's this ROMs folder I have it open right now um, basically these are the folders you know so like if you have Game Gear you'd put a Game Gear ROM in there or if you have NES you put an NES ROM in there and so on um, so basically the process for that would be you know you downloaded the, you downloaded the ROM from wherever you know, whether that be Emu Paradise, Dope ROMs, etc. And he would simply drag this file into, in this case, it would be into the NES folder. And then you would have your said game in there, and then you'd be good to go. You plug it back up, and then that emulator will now show up, because it has games in it. If, say, N64 has no games in it, it's not going to show up on Emulation Station. So anyways, that's the process that you need to run through to set up the USB. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and plug up the Pi right now, and we're going to do the controller configuration. Now normally it's going to give you like a welcome menu. Since I already configured this, we're not going to get that on the main screen here. But this is what you'll see on boot. You'll see RetroPie, and it's got to go in there. Takes a few minutes, and it'll load uh, Emulation Station, which as you can see right there, um, that's the main heart of all of this. So it makes multiple things like this. So you'll see this thing. You'll see a welcome menu. You know, it probably has something where you can config. But in our case, if it doesn't give you that, you press start. Configure input. Um, it should notice a gamepad. You press A. Okay, so it notices the USB gamepad. So now you just do you know, D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, right. Start, select, A and B, and then, then you just hold if it's not defined, you just have to hold on each thing, you'll click until it goes to the next one, then you gotta hold it down again, let up, so it goes through. Um, what I found though is that this controller does have some limiting functions um, since there's not that many buttons on it um, you're limited to as what you can do because normally you can do like save states um, okay so there there that got configured so now we can go back and then um, and then the way that you would navigate like in a game is um, you know, through here I'll go ahead and show some gameplay um, what should we show? Um, let's do, how about we show Donkey Kong? Let's show a little bit of Donkey Kong. Um, so on this, you know, it'll ask you to configure, which, you can just press start there. Alright, so here we go. And I died. <laughs> Oh, it came down the ladder. And then this progressively gets harder, obviously. But anyways, that gives you an idea of basically what the RetroPie is. And here I'm going to die again. But anyways, that's pretty much all that you need to set this up. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, this helps the channel to continue to grow. 
and to continue to uh, get reach out to more people. So if there are any suggestions for any videos in the future, please feel free to comment on this video. Anyways guys, I will talk to you later. Have a great Thanksgiving.